We greet you in peace this morning as we share worship with you from the United Church of Clinton. We yearn for a day when we will gather in person once again, but for now we need to practice patience and continue to share in virtual worship. We are so grateful and thankful to have Cindy, who has so tirelessly provided us with these virtual worship services, utilizing her gifts and abilities. We think back many, many years ago, before any of us could remember, to the last pandemic, that people had to face many, many years ago. We realize how isolated people were, not having the ability to jump on Facebook or Zoom or some other platform. There were trying times. People had to be very, very patient. So we are grateful for these days of technology and communication and give thanks. I made a few mistakes with the order of worship this morning that is reflected in your bulletin. If you are following along with your bulletin during this service, a few segments will seem out of order, so bear with me and go with the flow. Today we will be sharing the Lord's Supper. Please, if you have not already, grab a bread-like substance, a piece of toast, a muffin, a cracker, or such and also have some sort of beverage close by, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, some juice, or even water. We will symbolically have a meal together to remember the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. This week in our church, we have confirmation this afternoon at 3 o'clock. On Tuesday, Pam, Bob, and I will attend the United Church of Christ Association Zoom meeting to represent our church. Our regathering committee meets a week from Thursday night, not this Thursday night, as I've been telling people. It's a week from Thursday night. Pray for this committee ahead of time as they seek to regather with safety for all in mind. Yet we do realize that some of our congregation is ready to worship right now in person. Please be patient. We have many mission projects going on, as you will read in your bulletin. Today we have the Extend, Expand the Table food collection, bring non-perishable food items to Gloria's front porch from 11 to 6 p.m. for wheat. The collection of diapers continues for local families who need them. Next week we will collect funds for UMCOR, a United Methodist collection that helps with disaster relief, among other efforts. Spare change during the coming weeks will go to Mercy Ships that brings much needed medical need to locations globally. Their mission statement goes as follows. We follow the 2,000 year old model of Jesu, bringing hope and healing to the world's forgotten poor. And you can always donate a slice of the pie, so to speak. A $20 donation will help feed those in our community at the community cafe. So much good work is being done through the people of this church. So many ways to help and bring comfort and care to those who need a hand up from troublesome times. Now, let us all take a deep breath and center in and begin our time of worship with the ringing of the chime and the musical time for centering.
to, we're just going to do a mic check. Okay, yeah. I'll, so once again, good morning everyone, and welcome to the sanctuary which, where the sunlight on this beautiful sunshine day is pouring in through the windows. So now I invite you to join together in the call to worship. And as we do in these usual services when we are not physically close, I will join you in the all response. Our call to worship. Good people of the church, lift up your eyes and see. Have you not seen? Have you not heard? Our God greets us here. Good servants of the Most High, open your ears to hear. Have you not seen? Have you not heard? Our God meets us here. Good children of the light, open your hearts and know what it means to delight in God. For we have seen, heard, and known from the beginning to the end, our God is. Now, our song of praise this morning is an opportunity for us to join with what Alana just played for our time of centering. So we are going to sing two verses of How Great Thou Art. And in the second verse, you'll actually hear the words and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. For well, that's where they are this morning. So thank you, Alana. of this life, love, freedom, bounty, and beauty, the joy we know is beyond our words to speak. We celebrate this day our spiritual ancestors who paved a way for us to worship in freedom. Quite openly, we are here. 
we are here to open ourselves to our in-between God. Amen. And let us now take a moment to pass the peace of Christ with one another and to hold in our mind's eye all those who we are not physically present with today. So we will sing Peace Be With You once after Alana plays it, followed immediately by the Gloria Patri. Thank you, Alana. scripture reading this morning comes from the second book of the Old Testament, the book of Exodus. And this morning we will be in chapter 20 and we will be hearing verses 1 through 17. But first, where are we in this reading? We are at Mount Sinai. And who are we with? Well, first and foremost, with God, then Moses and the Israelites, the descendants of Abraham. Well, why are we here? After many years in Egypt, the latter years as an enslaved people, Moses, together with his brother Aaron, under God's guidance, have led the Israelites out of Egypt. But right now, they, the descendants again of Abraham, are homeless and wandering. But at this moment, they've arrived at the base of Mount Sinai. Moses, however, instructed by God, has climbed the mountain to receive God's instructions and relay them to God's chosen people. These instructions we know as the Ten Commandments. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. And we begin with God speaking. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you 
your son or your daughter, your male or female slaves, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. And this is the end of our first scripture reading this morning. And let us now join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us together pray the prayer of confession. In this season of Lent, we reflect on those things that lead us away from the life we desire. We focus on whatever we do that oppresses and enslaves others who, like us, are created in the image of the divine. And now we seek the grace that frees us to live in faithfulness to holy love. Amen. The God who brought the Israelites out of Egypt is the power that frees us from our sin. Live in the grace of God's love as you walk in the way of Jesus, and surely you will find mercy at the end of that road. Amen. I want you to ponder this for our message for all God's children this morning. It's entitled, Temper Tantrums. Do you remember a time when you witnessed a young child, whether that was your own child or someone else's child, having a temper tantrum, a meltdown of sorts, a fit of anger, perhaps the flailing of arms and legs and head, perhaps tears. Maybe a fit of storming to one's room in anger and frustration. Yet children are not the only ones to have temper tantrums. Adults have them as well, you know. When did you last have a meltdown? A real meltdown? What was the cause, the reason? In our scripture reading this morning, we see an angry Jesus, a Jesus who makes a whip, turns tables, and drives people and animals out of the temple. Sometimes our anger is not justified, but sometimes, as with Jesus, it is. It represents his passion and what is close to his heart. May God use us through our passions to bring about justice and peace. May we channel our anger into ways to set things right. 
Amen. And now let us join together in the pastoral prayer. I'll lead this prayer. Let us pray. Just and wise God, we come to you this morning wanting to praise you. We come as we are, some weary and frazzled, some perky and ready to go, and some who fall in the in-between. Instill in us the ability to come with honesty into your presence. Be this day with those who are ill or suffer in some way. Be with those who struggle with finances, family strife, those in the midst of grief and loss, and those who stand by a friend or family member in the midst of strife. Bestow your strength to those who care for an aging parent in any way that presents itself, those who struggle to get an appointment to receive a COVID vaccine, those who struggle with any form of depression. Depression takes many forms, O oh God, whether that be from seasonal depression, clinical depression, or situational depression that engulfs your people, especially as they continue in this year-long stretch of being quarantined and isolated due to COVID-19. This pandemic has affected us in so many ways. Not only are we separated from family and friends, we have lost a sense of normalcy. Taking all the precautions we need to do wears on our nerves, and we are so done with it. We grieve over the loss of not being able to worship with each other in person. Give us the patience to see this through and help us to see the light at the end of the tunnel. We need to hang on for a little bit longer for the sake of not letting our guard down. We give you praise for the medical community that has not only cared for us, but has developed a vaccine to combat this awful virus. Be upon us this day and give us hope and strength. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading this morning from the Gospel of John, one that I alluded to in the children's sermon. Jesus cleanses the temple. It goes like this. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said all this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. And now as we approach the time of holy humor, we remember this morning that we will be sharing communion. So this 
bit of humor this morning relates to a communion experience. It is entitled, If Jesus Was From Alabama. A little girl from Alabama went to church for the very first time ever when she was visiting her grandparents in Michigan. When the local pastor announced it was time for the Lord's Supper, she was excited because she was so hungry. The congregation filed up to the altar rail and the child watched in confusion as her grandparents received a wafer, a small wafer, and a small plastic cup of grape juice. She could hardly wait to get back to the pew to tell her grandma that Jesus was not from Alabama. How do you know that, dear? asked her grandma. Because that was the poorest meal I've ever seen, she said. Mama would have at least given everyone some cornbread and sweet tea. Now let us go to God in prayer. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock, redeemer, and friend. Amen. Have you ever just lost it? I mean really lost it. Upset about a minor or major thing that just struck you the wrong way? and the emotions erupted into an emotional outburst. Has this ever happened to you before? These moments in our lives hopefully, hopefully don't happen too often, but when they do, they get the attention of those around us and of ourselves. Jesus has the attention of all in the temple that day when he overturned the tables and drove out the people and animals. We often see Jesus as steady in his emotions, cool as a cucumber, as the expression goes. Yet here there is a Jesus that strikes us as really odd. He is downright angry, I mean really angry, and he acts on that anger as he tears up the place. A real, raw, human reaction to being surrounded by things that just set him off. Nope, we don't often remember Jesus this way. Then we hear these strange and bewildering words from Jesus. Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The disciples would remember this day and these words. Jesus, after his tirade, refers to what will happen after his death, which is later referred to as his resurrection. The disciples do not understand Jesus' words in that moment, but they will later on. Jesus is upset about how unholy humans have made the temple into a space that was sacred and special and set aside to glorify and praise God. Perhaps the sacrificial element of lifting up creatures unto God just didn't set well with Jesus. We do not know clearly. We can only guess Profiting from seeking out a religious pursuit can perhaps be seen as in question. 
We do not clearly know what was in Jesus' mind that day when he lost it. While losing it has a bad connotation, it sometimes stirs up a reaction to something that we feel passionate about. Maybe by losing it, we allow people and ourselves to know what's a priority in our mind. It allows us to know what matters from our perspective. Be aware in your lives to what truly matters to you. What are your passions? What really means the world to you? What is it that you would go to the ends of the earth to work for or protect? In the midst of it, know that Jesus cares and understands. Jesus cares about you, and Jesus cares about good causes. Jesus cares about pursuing causes that bring wholesome and just outcomes. Seek out those moments and be aware of what really sets you off. Maybe that's an opportunity to listen to the still, small, but powerful voice that speaks to us out of the blue and takes us by surprise. As we share in the Lord's Supper this day, remembering our Savior in his presence on this earth, may we recommit ourselves to those causes that allow us to move toward a more wholesome way of living. May it be so for you and for me. Amen. And let us take a moment now and share in a musical prayer sanctuary. Thank you, Alana. now the invitation to the offerings. Our tokens offered here are but symbols of our lives and sacrifice lived every day. May we give ourselves to the world as a holy offering acceptable unto God, our rock and our redeemer. Remember that if you have not yet returned your pledge card, that you have an opportunity to do so, send that to the church office. Also, if you would like, you may send a check to the United Church of Clinton for your weekly offering. And also remember that you can give online by going to our website. Let us center in.
Let us pray. Receive these gifts, Holy One. Sanctify them by your spirit. Drive away any ill motives and accept, we pray, our humble offering. Amen. And now let us prepare for communion by singing, let us break bread together. Thank you, Alana. one are you eternal one you sit above through within the circle of the earth setting light into being casting the stars in the sky founding the evolving earth and all that dwell within it limitless is your power and great is your wisdom you look upon the lowly as your most cherished creatures you visit upon the downtrodden with presence, grace, and the promise of eternal justice. You sent to us your own child, Jesus, who reached into unexpected places, calling women beyond the limits of their times, equipping men for nurturing love, welcoming children into your holy embrace. And so we recall on the night of betrayal and desertion. The light of the world took bread and broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And in like manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and after giving thanks, gave it to them, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it for the remembrance of me. Life's greatest feast before us. We excitedly proclaim Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Dear God, you transform. You transform all that is before you so that the touch of your grace, we are never the same. Dear God, you illumine, you bring light to all peoples, light to the nations, light into our hearts, light on your way. Dear God, we pray for your spirit, transform, illumine, bless. Make these ordinary gifts of bread and cup into the extraordinary presence of Christ within us. In doing so, hold us as your own. Renew us as your people for the sake of the world you love. 
For all honor and glory are yours, O God, through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit in your glorious creation now and forevermore. Amen. As we have shared this meal together, we pause in prayer. Let us pray together. We have been fed, Holy One, by your presence. We have been led, Eternal One, by your light. May we bask in this glow now and forevermore. Amen. And let us join now together with singing, God be with you till we meet again. Thank you, Alana. to this world without fear, knowing that the weakness of the holy is stronger than every human power. Live free, and the God who brought the Israelites out of Egypt will be your strength and your power now and forevermore. Amen.
Thank you.